Today we're going to have a look at this pen. Very, very interesting. Uh, the Diplomat Aero Volute, uh, in English, Volute. Uh, Volute, look it up. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, a curly shape. You, uh, you find it on um, uh, ionic columns. It's, a, it's an architectural thing. And this pen is named after it. Now, the pen was sent to me by, actually sent to Aziza by Papier und Stift. I'll leave a link in the description. And I think it's very interesting. It's a, it's a, a whole new finish in the uh, Diplomat Aero model. And a limited one. Very interesting. I, I do not recall Diplomat really doing a lot of limited editions. I could be utterly wrong. But interesting to do that to do that on this model. So we're going to have a look at the pen, I cover the past the pen, I'll do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, so here we go with the Diplomat Aero Volute, uh, which uh, interesting here in size comparison to the Lamy Safari. Similar length, but of course the Aero has this famous Zeppelin shape, so it does have that. Now, uh, what is fascinating about this, I have reviewed I think two arrows uh, previously, so uh, it's, it's pretty much the same pen. What makes it interesting is the finish, uh, which is created through hydro dripping, uh, which is an interesting technique where, as I understand it, the to be sort of printed pattern is put on water and then the object is dipped into it and the surface tension of the water makes the, the, the sort of the, the, the pattern really spread all around the object that is to be painted. So it is it is a bit fancy. It does have a very interesting look to it. There is no texture, right? It's just it's just sort of um, painted on and then clear coated. But quite nice. So Zeppelin based design, uh, you have this fancy um, uh, finish we could say and uh, this pen, as I said, I found that very interesting for an interesting choice for Diplomat, especially with the Aero model. It is a limited edition. There are 1,000 of these pens. So, let's have a look at the, the whole pen. Finial, you have the Diplomat logo, which I've always liked. Uh, then you have a clip. It says Diplomat, um, nice and springy. Uh, you, you can't really, it looks like it, you, you might be able to, to push it here and open it up, but you, you, you can't really. Then you have the cap, which turns seamlessly into the barrel, um, and then you have a little end cap right there. All right. Nice, you have these this fluted design, right, and then the cap pops off metal section which seems to have a tiny bit of texture to it so I don't find this slippery and then we have a nice number six steel nib in this case in broad which again has the diplomat logo and also says diplomat since 19 and I can't read that from this distance since 1922 okay plastic feed and then the pen is filled through a cartridge converter mechanism. So, nice and simple and easy to clean. All right, let's see how it writes. I have very often been very impressed by the nibs used on uh, Diplomat pens. Uh, I think they are very comfortable to write with, very pleasant to write with, and I really like their broad nibs. Now, this is a steel nib. You can actually upgrade to a gold nib for 114 euros and 88 cents. Um, that does not include that though. And when Diplomat says broad, uh, arrow, and this is the volute. Wow. Oh, this looks like a. Uh, it's getting worse by the second. Okay, um, broad steel and the ink is uh, Wassermann Blau, aka Waterman Blue. Sorry for this terrible writing, I'm reaching around a tripod, okay? 
Try doing this. You cannot do this. Okay? Stop bitching. You know what? That's it. I've had... No, I'm just kidding. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not upset. You can do this and you actually should too. Everybody should be doing pen reviews. Wouldn't it be funny if I would get so angry that I would just throw this pen down and just leave in the middle of a review? I think it would be hilarious. Um, a lovely writer. I love this pen. Um, fast writing always takes some of my... This is all my mental effort. I cannot write that quickly and talk intelligibly. So, I love this pen. Nice, nice balance. Uh, and for those of you who like it, yes, it can be posted. Gets quite top-heavy, but you can do it. And again, these nibs, the Diplomat nails it. Like, they, they, they nail it with their, their nibs. I've not used a bad Diplomat nib that I can remember. The broads are true broads, they flow richly, it, it's just a, a joy to use, and usually they're pretty affordable too. This one happens to be a little bit more expensive given that it's a limited edition, but seriously, I mean, it's, it's a very nicely tuned pen. Uh, the nibs are nails, so very, very careful. I try to squeeze out some line variation, but not, not really. These are stiff, stiff nibs, and that's okay. So. Uh, oops, uh, it's not actually the end, because we needed to look at reverse writing. Definitely scratchier, I'm f I, f I feel the nib catching on paper, um, but no. Uh, you can definitely turn this from a broad into a fine, which is kind of neat. It's just that you will start to feel feedback. That's all there's to it. So, let's talk about what I like and what I don't like about this particular pen. Okay, what do I like, what do I not like about the Diplomat Aero? The Volute, I should say, because this is not any Aero. Well, <clears throat> I owned a model like this, not this finish, but I owned, I owned an Aero. I thought it was quite a pleasant pen. I've reviewed another one, and this, I think it's the third one I review. I think they are fun pens. Solid, well-made, they write beautifully. So, it's nice. In my mind, it's comfortable. I like that this section is quite long. That leaves a lot of space for your fingers. Very comfortable. A very comfortable pen to hold. And again, lovely nib. Number six, works fine. I wouldn't feel the need to upgrade this to a gold nib. Save yourself some money. Uh, the section also has a very mild texture which makes it not slippery. And that's very nice. You can hold this it doesn't really get slippery. I really like that. I appreciate that in this, this pen. And the nib, it's hard not to excessively compliment that because it's just a lovely writer. Nice, broad, wet, writes very well. I really love that. Things I don't like so much, well, this is not a cheap pen. So uh, these, I see them retail for about 207 euros. And that is without VAT. Right. If you were to upgrade this to a gold nib, you're looking at 388 euros, including VAT, which is a lot of money for this, I think. Got to convert a fill and all that. But on the other hand, it is a limited version of the Aero. So if you, I think the Aeros are quite collectible because they come in a number of colors, and I can see people going for all the colors. Then you would want to add this to your collection. And to be honest, it looks kind of cool. Right, uh, whatever the hydro dripping uh, specifics aside, it's a bit like a zebra, or whatever. I I think it is. It's 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 quite cool. Or or marble. It definitely has a, a marble feeling to it. So there's a lot going for it. I just think it is a bit pricey for what it is. But I cannot objectively complain with the pen. The section doesn't really slip around in your hand. The nib writes really well. Yeah, now what is there to complain about? So I think overall this is a very nice and pleasant pen. That's all let's do it. So a very kind thank you to Papillon Stift for sending it to Aziza, and then I took it from Aziza. I hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.